have this is ultramarine blue, quinacridone rose. This is uh, naphthol red, yellow ochre. This is cad orange, cad yellow, and cad lemon and white. So what I kind of liked in this was that log was sort of coming down this way. So there are actually two logs there, uh, but I think I'm going to only put in one log. So, uh, I'm going to have one log coming in, and then I like the vertical um, of the, um, you see those vertical logs, so I'm going to put, put that in. So that's going to be like my uh, focal point. I kind of really like how the snowbank comes down. So I'm going to ignore this. Um, you see the second log here? Instead, I'm just going to have it be the bank. So I'm just thinking about like un unequal, um, trying to create unequal shapes. So if things are equal, then I need to change it. So I feel like this and this is sort of equal in, um, so I think the log could go more like this. And and this one could be okay. Lavani, do you often start with a a red for? Uh, yeah, I like to use this because uh, this is like the quinacridone rose. Um, it just doesn't interfere with any color. Uh, afterwards, so I like. Yeah, I often start with this. Yeah. Would you use that with snow, though? Um, yeah, because all of this will mostly get covered up. So um, it um, it's just something, yeah. Or I would use yellow ochre. These are the two colors that I use. But yellow ochre has white in it. So um, if you're painting something dark, then I would not use yellow ochre. Uh, but this one is like pure pigment. So it kind of is nice to, um, like, it will, it will not muddy any of the colors. I, I am just trying to divide this into, like, unequal shapes. But right now, everything feels equal. So I'm just trying to think it through. Okay, so I think I'm going to keep this one bigger. Okay. Uh, this one is going to be super skinny up here. Right. And this one's going to be smaller. That's better. So I'm just like thinking, I think it's better. We'll find out. And I have this sort of vertical things here that I'm going to put. And then I have the this thing. But I might just have it go down here. I like that um, long thing. It's all, the pond was all ice, and I think there were just these tracks because there were um, these birds in the pond. Uh, 
and uh, either ducks or goose or something, they were the ones that had created these tracks, I think. Okay, so I'm going to make it, um, this painting be sort of mid-tone driven. So uh, everything's going to be mid-tone, except for the snow, that's going to be my light. And my dark is going to be a few things here and in here. Okay, so, um, so I'm going to start with, with my mid-tone. So I'm just going to start somewhere. So what I'm going to, okay, I'm going to start with all the foliage back there and then I'm going to do the reflections. So um, I also have this color here that is um, uh, neutral gray. Gamblin neutral gray. Uh, it's just there for, for convenience. So I'm going to start with a, a sort of a mid-tone yellow, yellowish pink or something like that for the, the grass that's there, the dried grass. So I'm mixing a sort of a purple. So it, the reason I start with the purple is because um, even though it's yellow, I wanted it, it's really neutral and cool. So I, I figured if I start with a purple and then add the yellow to it, it's going to be uh, automatically neutralized and cooled. So usually if I dip into my Gamsol, I don't take very much. Uh, I try to keep the paint not super thin. So I'm putting in some, mixing some yellow ochre, more of the neutral gray, and some more red. So I'm just going to block it all in. And as I go back, I want it to get cooler. So I want this part to be much uh, cooler. So I'm going to put, move it more towards the um, purple. Um, so I'm going to go through like, this is yellow, but it's like super neutralized. So just think of it as a cooling. So I'm just going to initially add more red to it. I also have Payne's gray here that I, I don't know. Can you guys see it? I think you can. Or maybe it's, it's just to the left of, at the left corner. Okay, um, really cool color. You know, I actually am going to put some uh, Taylor yeah. blue also on my palette because I like some of the icy blues that you can get. And I can, I think it's going to help with the ice. Okay. I'm just going to like lock it all in worry about and then I'm going to slowly start warming this up as I come 
uh, forward. Mm -hmm. And you can see that, you can see that happening in the photo. It's kind of a little confusing because um, um, there is some light here in the photo, which I may put in later on, but for now I'm just gonna have a transition from cool to warm. And I'm also gonna make it slightly darker as it comes uh, forward. So I'm gonna start darkening it a bit. And I'm gonna start shifting towards the green. I, I'm gonna go to the green and then I'm gonna go slightly orange as I come here. Bhavani, could you yeah. tell how you mix that color through? Um, I put a whole bunch of colors in there. So I start, started with what I had here from the previous mixture. I started adding a bit of blue to it and then I started neutralizing it with paints gray. And then I, I, I added a little bit of pillow blue to it. Um, yeah, it's, sorry, it's, it was already from the mixture that was there. So it was kind of like using the existing mixture and adding a bit of pillow blue to it. So Thalo? think of a neutral gray with pillow in it. Did you just say you added phthalo? Yes, yeah, pillow blue, yeah. I added pillow blue to my palette uh, just now. Yeah, I'm just slowly um, warming it up and so, I, as you can see, I've been mixing like cat orange into my mixture to um, sort of warm, like different, I've been mixing different warms. So I've been putting like um, red and then I added, towards the end, I added a bit of cat, cat orange, yeah. I'm just doing this right now to get the bottom. My easel kind of covers the lower bottom. So I'm just putting that in, okay. Okay. This is fairly thin, um, but I'm going to um, go back in with thicker paint. It's just that initially it's good to be like when I'm very, when I'm not sure of the color or uh, when I'm not, ex yeah, like when I'm uncertain, I am a bit more um, thin. But once I am certain of some color, I would go in, like you can see, I have, this is like just, I have scrubbed it on the canvas. Um, so, um, and these are reflections, so I'm just going to like soften all these transitions. And this is just my block-in, so I'm going to, uh, I will be going back into all of this again. So, uh, I just want to get all of the values in there. So right now we only covered mid-tone. So let's, let's do the dark and then we'll do the light flat. Uh, so usually I tend to start with either mid-tones or my dark. So I'm going to go into my darks now. And I start with paints gray and I'm going to warm it up. So because it's the, the light is so cool, um, the darks will be warm. Generally, when the light is overcast and cool, your darks will be nice and warm. So I'm just putting paint spray, blue, orange, and red, like putting reds and oranges to warm it up, basically. So this is fairly dark. Bhavani, when you said you were, you always start with your mid-tones or your darks, is it, did you start with the mid-tones, this picture, because that was the majority of the painting and the, the darks were just accents, or is there a, how do yes. you make the decision? No, you are exactly right. I started because midtone was dominant. If there were large shadows in this painting, then I would have started with my darks. And okay, thank shadows. you. Yeah. This is really, really dark. So I'm going to lighten it. So when you want to lighten a mixture, you can think about using any color that is lighter than your current mixture. So it doesn't always have to be white. So I want to lighten this. I can use my cad lemon because... My cat lemon is going to warm it up while lightening it. But if I would have put white, it would make it way too cool. So that is 
the same holds for, so this is really dark and I might lighten it later, but for now I'm gonna keep it. So my darts are, so, so Bonnie, would you say again why it's a warm dark and not a cool dark? Because um, my, when, so generally it, it, the temperature kind of depends on the temperature of the light. So when your light is sunny, so that's like um, a, a warm, sunny day, your shadows will be cool because it's getting the um, gas of the sky. But when generally when you have cool light, you have warm shadows. So um, that's why, uh, and this is like an overcast snow scene. So um, that's why my shadows are cool because all of my light is going to be warm. Uh, sorry, opposite. The shadows are warm because the light is going to be cool. Does that make sense, Claudia? Does that make sense? Uh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. What makes the shadow warm though? Is it, if the light is cool, mm -hmm. then what makes the shadow warm? What, I mean, I the lighting? What? Just that um, it's the, it's relative to the light. So generally okay. shadow is the blocking of light. So when the cool light is not reaching the shadow, right. part, they end up taking a warmer cast than the uh, lit okay. part because all of those are affected by the light. I see. So I'm going to go into the light now. Um, so the light is snow. It looks white, but it's not white. It's every other color. So I'm just going to try to mix a purple that's like super light. <clears throat> I'm using a little bit of pillow to cool this, um, to create a nice cool light. I want to make sure that it is lighter than this color. So I'm just going to, I put a dot, check that and it is, it is lighter. So I'm going to start with this. This is not that light, but I'm going to get lighter as I uh, build up. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> start with this. Just going to start putting it in. And just going to shift it a little bit. So you see how um, when you're mixing light mixtures and if it's as light as um, snow, you have to be a bit um, careful in um, how much paint you take. Like you have to, uh, like I'm just dipping into it. Like for example, I don't know if you can see, but I'm like not taking that much paint when I'm trying to modify my white. So that way you can make sure that it stays in the light family. So as it goes back there, I'm also gonna like warm it up a little bit and um, gray it like a bit darker is what I meant to say. So once I put in my light, you can see how my, that my dark is maybe too dark and I need to, but we'll get there. I'm just trying to
I want my <clears throat> lightest light of the snow to be on this log. So I'm just darkening this one a bit. Here, I'll do it. So usually the way I mix is I have three piles going. I have my light, medium, and dark. I don't, and then if I need to clear it out. Um, so initially in the blocking, I might have separate piles like this, but then usually I'll have three piles going at the same time. And I keep them next to each other so that they, um, uh, so that they, you can see that your light, your medium, and your dark are all sort of different from each other. And then you can, um, you're not starting any mixture from scratch. So I always mix, when I'm starting a new mixture, I'll take what's there and I'll mix something into it. So that kind of is a strategy you can use for color harmony is to not create separate piles of paint for each, each part of the painting but rather try to work in value zones. So you have your light. And if you want to create something that's, make something that's light, you just start from that mixture and modify it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. So I'm going to go back into my mid-tones. And, and I don't know if you guys noticed, but I also try to keep, use different brushes for my light, medium, and dark. So I was switching my brush as I switched to a different value. That's just to prevent, just makes it easier, especially it's good to have a different brush for dark and light. I want to put in a little bit of snow here too. So because of my surface, you can see how I just put in this paint, but I'm still able to go back into it. And if I use a light touch, I can um, uh, put a light value on top of a mid-tone because uh, my surface allows me to layer the paint. So that's kind of one of the reasons why Za is always um, telling us to use the right surface. So I just wanted to go in, like there's a lot of underpainting going through here that I want to cover up. Uh, so that's what I'm doing now is going in uh, with a bit stronger colors and more paint, basically. So usually if you're trying to lay paint on top of uh, an existing layer of paint, it's a good idea to use a light touch um, and not like push in because that's gonna end up scooping what's underneath. Okay. Um, there's just a few things I want to There was too much yellow. I had some yellow here from somewhere, so I just had to make sure that I don't end up making my snow too warm. So that's why I put that away. And I, I will still pull a little bit of that mixture, but 
I don't know if you guys were looking at my palette, but. Okay, so I'm just mixing mm, some snow. Um, I wanna soften this edge here so that it's not so strong. So I'm gonna mix some snow values that are a bit darker. And I'm gonna put that along that edge. And I'm, I'm using a very light touch with the brush. You see how I soften that edge a little bit? All right, and go ahead. Beautiful. Oh, thanks. Thank you. And I want a few more, this snow bank, I want a few more um, uh, leafy things. I mean, not leafy, grass-like things. So I'm just gonna put a few. And okay, uh, I want to before I get into more detail, I want to um, work on the darks. I don't like my darks, um, they are too dark. So I'm gonna go into so, like I said, I have light, medium, and dark pile here. So these are my three piles. I try not to. If the reason to have three piles on your this thing is uh, on your palette is you can see right there that they are different values, so you know that you're not going in and out of different values, and that they are distinctly different from each other. I think that's the important part. So I'm going to warm up my. Um, Okay, I like that better. Yeah, that's better. I think I could even go a little bit lighter. When it's too dark, it will like look like a black. Oh yeah, that's better. Okay, I like that much better. I think this can be really dark here, but I can have a transition. Right. Okay. And generally, uh, I don't know, like if you, so if I want to put in a reflection and um, so if something is dark, the reflection is usually slightly lighter, and you can see that in the reference too. I can either mix it lighter or I can just go, because I have some of the blue here, I just take a very light touch to it, and it ends up being lighter. Or you put it in and then you scrape it off. That also helps to make it slightly lighter. Okay, so um, let's see. I want to work around the focal area, develop that a little bit. And I also want to work on the reflection. So I, um, let me just, so once I finish my initial block in, I kind of just jump from one place to another. So initially I'm more organized, like, okay, I'll work on my um, value, zones. So I'll start with either the mid-tone or the dark, and then I go from one value to another. But once that lock-in is done, I will feel more free to jump from between the value zones. Just trying to respond to what's happening and trying to make sense. Um, of areas that need. So you just kind of try to see, oh, which area needs more attention and work on that area. Just trying to define this bank back here. So right now in the photo, you can see that there is a log there, uh, which I'm completely, completely ignoring. And I'm just making it a bank. Okay. So 
So when you put in a line that's too thick, you can always make it thinner by cutting back in. Savani, are you using any medium? No, no medium. It's just uh, when the paint is not flowing, I'll use a bit of cancel uh, to thin it. But um, I don't think I've dipped in that much into my cancel, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I use the cancel more uh, initially. Okay, and I just want to um, work on this thing here, the tracks a little bit, so um, before that, I, I feel like um, these So when something is light, it's, it, 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 it will be reflected in um, darker. So I feel like this, some of this could be slightly darker. So I'm just gonna darken it a tiny bit. And I'm also gonna warm it up a tiny bit. Not super warm, but just a little bit. So, Fani, did you say when something is white, it will be slightly darker in the reflection? Yeah, when uh, the, so usually the lights are reflected darker and the darks are reflected lighter. So a dark object will, reflection will be slightly lighter. And if it's something is being lit uh, with light, the reflection will be darker. Yeah, thank okay. you. Yeah, okay, uh, I just wanted to, um, what time is it? No, so I have a, 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 like 15 minutes. Um, okay, let me see. What is it? I want to fix the tracks and I want to develop the focal area. So I think I'm going to develop the focal area first and then I'm going to work on the tracks. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to boost the light on the snow in this area. So I'm going to go back into my lights. Get a new paper towel. Uh, when you're working on like a snow scene, it's important sometimes to make sure that your brush is clean because uh, or if you're working on a super sunny scene as well, uh, sometimes whatever the leftover colors in your brush may be of a mid value and that will pollute your lights. So if you want clean lights, it helps to have a clean uh, brush. Especially if your lights are like super light and... Makes sense. <laughs> I'm just gonna make this snow a little pinker so that it sort of um, stands out from the blue, rest of the blue snow. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of yellow just to warm it up a tiny bit so that it will contrast with the rest of it. And I'm gonna put some, I think there's a little bit of snow on this guy on top of it. And
And I'm gonna maybe a little bit here on this bank. Okay. You see how when I was mixing this, I don't know if you guys saw my pa uh, palette, but I kind of had to, uh, I kept mixing and it would get darker and darker. And so I kept having to put the pile away and restart. So some, like, especially when you're doing your highlight or something like that, just take the time to mix the right, it makes a difference if you just take the time to mix the right color that you want. I'm just trying to turn the log a little, oops, <laughs> turn the log a little bit. So I'm going to just put some darker snow right where it meets the dark of the log. Right here. So it's like going light to dark. And also a tiny bit here. Okay, that's good. Um, the next thing I want to do is, I want to work on the tracks, actually. Hold on. So I'm going to add the, when you say tracks, what are you meaning? What, where do is that? Do you see that, uh, the track on the river, like, oh, the yeah. ice. The yeah, on the ice. yeah. Okay. it's kind of okay. like where the birds went and then they left um sort of yeah gotcha thanks yeah. so i'm just you know i just need to figure out what shape i like like i i don't yeah i think i like it going off the bottom then all the way to the right yeah that's better and I'm gonna. So Bonnie, did you say that was an MDF panel you're you were using? Uh, yeah. Uh, this is not MDF. This is hardboard. Okay. So I buy these uh, speedball gessoed panels from Blick, and I gessoed them like multiple times after that. Okay. Speedball. Yeah. Um. Say that again. Speed ball, like speed, and a ball. I see. Thank you. And sometimes I use um, Alumacom, uh, which is aluminum panels. Uh, that also I like a lot, but this one is not that. Okay. Thank you. So now I'm just gonna adjust the shapes. Is it, uh, do you guys wanna start? I don't know, I don't know. I don't wanna take up too much of your time. So maybe I'll just go for another five minutes and then maybe, because now it's just time to refine. Like oh. everything is here. Please take up our time, Bhavani. <laughs> You're enjoying this, I am. Yeah, this is great. Oh, good. Well, we love it. We love it. Oh, thank you. I'm very glad to hear that. <laughs> as long as you want. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now it's like, like I said, just refining. So I'm just going to do stuff, see, step back, think about like, yeah. I'm going to work on the reflections for just a little bit and um, oops. I said that, but I saw something. Hold on. I just think this log. I just want the log to uh, so. Oh, 
hold on. I just want to see how the log fits on. Okay. If you guys want to use your knife, I recommend like playing with it. I just like find it's so good to do certain things. Um, it's just like a lot of fun. Like just defining the shapes of things, pushing uh, some edges or it's just really very fun to use it. Okay, um, I, I did want to put in some of the, these reflections that are in there, so I'm going to do that now. I'm not too crazy about those reflections. I'm just going to reduce it. Just really reduce these reflections. I don't like them so much. Um, bring back to the dark. Good girl. All gone, girl. <laughs> I'm not super happy about these tracks. The way I paint these days is I will often reach this stage and I I have to like take a break and sometimes these days it's like not just a couple of hours. I have to like sometimes wait till the next day and then Do you see you just came back, come back with a fresher eye for what you're wanting? And... Yeah, and I think what happens is while I am, um, like, I don't like the tracks, but I don't have a good solution for them in my head right now. Um, sometimes, you know, you just put in a few lines and it works well, but this one is kind of not working for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe, yeah, if, yeah, I, I think having a fresher eye and what happens usually is it's just in my head. Even when I'm not painting, I'm thinking about so, it. So you have or you have an idea in your head, but it's just not translating onto the um 
No, what I'm saying is the problem is in my head usually. So I'm like mulling it over even when I'm not painting. Oh. Uh -huh. so, um, because I don't have a idea of the solution in my head yet. I see. So it's more of I'm clueless. <laughs> <laughs> um but she's mortal after all <laughs> uh, well, maybe that's next week you can show us what your solution is yeah yeah maybe uh it's just maybe it's just the shape of it i just need to fix the shape of it but the other thing that i don't i don't like how this comes down and then continues all the way down here. So I think I need some snow up here. Little things like that is what I am thinking about right now. Um, like little things that are bothering me. I love those little touches you have that are just barely there, but they describe everything. Like the oh. In the background, the Back there? Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. it makes so much sense. You need to go out. Yeah, I think that's better because um, I just didn't like how the, it was like. It was you. It's not exactly a tangent, but um, it kind of was. There, there was like this. So I wanted this shape to be different. But now this is parallel. So these 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 kind of all these little problems come in, and then you have to think about it and see if it bothers you. And sometimes, like you won't even see a, like you might have two equal things. And to be honest, like lately, I have gotten better at spotting equal things. But I was an expert at painting; everything wanted to be equal. Was an expert at painting equal things. When you say equal, like equal in size, equal in perspective, or something, size. yeah, usually equal in size. So just switch it up. Yeah, like to have unequal shapes. I think that's important. Uh, mm -hmm. Compositional tool is yeah, just having unequal shapes. That's very that makes a lot of difference, and that's what I've realized is. It's a skill that takes time to develop, but if you become conscious of it, uh, you know, just realizing. Uh, so initially, like say, for example, somebody tells you, okay, like for example, in Zah's critique, we say, uh, Zah or somebody says, oh, you've got these two are equal shapes, so then you realize it like that, then eventually your goal is that you want to be able to see it yourself. Either right. before you put it down or sometimes after you put it down because it doesn't always happen before you put it down. I'm just like, you know, you guys should, um, we can stop right now because I think I'm just like literally just doing finishing touches. Except for this thing, which I haven't figured out yet. I will try once more. <laughs> yeah. And during this process too, you've been doing things like squinting. Um, oh, squinting, uh, no, mm -hmm. like I do squint, yeah. When I step back, I squint. When I, um, yeah, when I want to like check the values, right? A lot of squinting initially, and then when I step back and I try to figure out what's going on in the painting, if it is working, when I, yeah. It's important to step back. I, I I didn't used to do that enough. Not that, I mean, I could always do more of it, but. Oh, 
Okay. Yeah, I think um, we can stop now. I think the last thing I promise is the 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 reflection. I want some slightly stronger reflections just at just very close to the thing. Yeah, I think that's better. Yeah. Okay, I I think I'm done. If you guys have any questions.